in this lecture we are going to talk about derivatives for vector valued functions so we are going to talk about a function from rn there is a mistake from rn to rm so that is why i'm writing capital f because it is going from rn to rm vector valued that is it is taking a vector in rm and putting into rm so for such a function what would be the derivative how do i compute the derivative you have already learned how to do it just now in the last lecture when we spoke about the hegian matrix because if i write capital f as the gradient of f then the gradient of f is a function from rn to rm and in general we can write a vector valued function so, so as a vector whose components itself are function from rn to r so f takes an x in rn and maps it to some element in rn so those rn the uh, maps it to some element in rm so those elements in rm will have m components but these components will change if uh, once you put the value of the components will change once you change the x so here also these components are actually depending on x and hence is a function of x so if f was the gradient of some function small f then these would be nothing but del f del x1 dot 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 del f del x n when i am talking about the gradient so gradient itself is a vector valued function from r into r and so we have already saw what a vector valued function is and the way we compute the hegian matrix the same way we compute the derivative of a vector valued function so we will assume that we will say if we will define actually that f is differentiable at a point x if all these component functions f1 x dot 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 fmx all these are differentiable so how do i look at this differentiability how do i get a framework what is that matrix that would give me the derivative of f so you have understood for a vector valued function the derivative is the matrix a matrix of the a matrix represents the derivative here what is that matrix that will represent the derivative now if i go so if i know each fi is differentiable i can write the derivative definition of the derivative here i am is the i i think i'm making a lot of printing error nowadays because too much too much typing that that uh, makes you have a lot of typo errors and hence at the end celebrate the poisson distribution uh, those who under those who understood what i am trying to mean through that <laughs> a small joke i guess but poisson distribution the errors that you find in the pages of a book the typographical errors they would they would follow a poisson distribution with some mean so now uh, each if i is a differentiable and i have written down the definition of the derivative the small oh term the error term i have given small oh of i because it is it has got to do with uh, each i when to change i the, the structure will may change just change so what i do is i write first for f1 then for f2 then for f3 so you have listed down the whole things all of them so you can now form column vectors so if i of x plus h i if i vary from i from 1 to m i'll get this vector and for this case i'll get this vector now what is this grad fx into h means grad fx grad fi x into h means you take the gradient of the function fi or f1 you write it in a form of a row vector so del f del x1 del f del x2 dot 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 del f del x n similarly you do for and uh, for the mth function del fm del x1 dot del fm del x2 del fm del x n so now that matrix which i write it as jfh this each of which means this when i when i when you have this in a when in a vector when you list this in a product basically that symbolizes the multiplication of a matrix with this vector h you know this so this matrix whose rows are nothing but the gradient of each fi is written as well, whose ith row is the gradient of the ith function fi is written as a row vector so that is called the jacobian matrix jfx and the oh term is nothing but this one the error term now this has to vanish because oh1 by norm h 
as norm h goes to 0 is 0 o, o of norm h m by norm h as norm h goes to 0 you can easily show that this happens now how do i write the jfx see so what is jfx obviously i'm computing at a particular x so jfx transpose is i've written it is a matrix whose columns are the gradient vectors of f1 x dot dot, dot fmx so jfx is a matrix whose rows are the gradients of the vectors when uh, gradients of the functions f1 f2 fm written as row vectors so that gives me what is called the jacobian matrix okay now you can write once you have written it in this form you can write this as f of, f of x minus fx minus jfx h is o of small o of norm h so once you know that this is true um, that this happens because each of them are small o terms so this becomes a small o term of norm h then it simply means this because this term is nothing but o of norm h this o of norm h is this term so that we can define that that a function f is differentiable at x if there exists a m cross n matrix which behaves in this fashion okay basically i am just rewriting this thing in in this way because i know that the because these are small o terms this in this equality this limit holds true so that's how you can compute the Jacobian matrix. Take the first function, take its gradient, put it as a row vector for the second, do the same, for the do the same, whatever matrix you get is a Jacobian matrix. So I invite you to compute the Jacobian matrix, take it as a kind of homework and do it. All the problems that I am giving you here is a homework. The chain rule, I have not given the proof here. Because it, it, it will be even too messy to discuss the proof here. But a student should actually really try to do the proof so so let us have two functions f from rm to rm or rn to rm sorry there is a mistake here f is from rn to rm not rm to rm rn to rm and g is from rm to r two differentiable functions then their composition, that is, first you apply f on an element x on Rm, it will give you capital F of x, which is an element of Rm. On that you apply g, so that becomes g of fx, g of fx, that will give an element in R. So this x, through these two mappings, have been bought from Rn to R through Rm. So I sometimes this is also written as G sor k for G composition f. Now what is the gradient of h? Because these two are differentiable function, h is also differentiable from Rn is a Rn to R function. So what is the gradient? The gradient is the transpose of the Jacobian matrix multiply with the gradient of G computed at fx. This is the chain rule. Now this proof would not be given. I would rather ask you to search for the proof yourself. Try it out and see what happens. Okay. The end of this, end of our study of uh, de derivatives, we are going to talk about the mean value theorem. So this is the Lagrange mean value theorem for a function phi defined from a b to r you already know that you have learned it in 101 so i am not going to spend too much time with on this because simply means this is not f here it's only phi so if it is continuous on a v and is differentiable in the open interval a v then there would exist a c in the open interval a v such that phi of b minus phi of a is phi dash c into b minus a you know this this is known so i'll not talk about this now i have not spoken about line segment at all because we need to speak about line segment because after the mid sem when we speak about convex analysis, line segment would be a key issue. It will be the fundamental thing with which we will start. So let us speak about line segment. Line segment is a very simple thing. Take two points on a piece of paper and join them by a line. That is a line segment joining two points. So a line segment joining two points x, y in Rn consists of all 
point z such that z is written as lambda times y plus 1 minus lambda times x where lambda is lying between 0 and 1 means when I put lambda equal to 0 I am at x at one end and when I am moving from lambda from 0 to 1 I am actually moving from x to y because when lambda is equal to 1 I reach y. So this is called the line segment joining x and y and there is something called strict line segment joining x and y because that is because you take two points and join them by line, line segment and just put your thumbs on the two end points that is they are absent from that part that from the line segment. So that is called an open line segment. So it consists of all elements of this form lambda y plus 1 minus lambda x when lambda is element of the strict interval 0 1 the open interval 0 1. So whether I write xy or yx does not matter they represent the same line segment i whether I join from xy or yx I essentially talk about the same line segment it does not matter the points are same. So, when I will go from y to x I will write it as lambda when I write y when I write y x y I mean actually I am moving from x to y when I write y x I actually mean from I am moving from y to x. So, in that case elements should be represented by lambda x plus 1 minus lambda y. So, geometrically so, for expressing line segment joining x y is same if we write it as x y or y x. So, geometrically they remain the same. So, it will be consisting of points of this form also. You can write, so you, you can say okay, it does not matter, I can I can think of y x as the same thing when I, I am at uh, 0, I am at x and when uh, and when I am at 1, I am at y. I can write this as y x also because ultimately they are the same line segment. Of course, you can make a convention that I write x y when I am moving from x to y, I write y x when I am moving from y to x that when I am at when I will move from the position of 0 lambda equal to 0 to lambda to 1, but I can do the opposite also I can move from the position of lambda equal to 1 to lambda equal to 0, it will give me the same straight line. So, what is more important ge geometrically or topologically to prove is that the x y is a closed set in Rn and this open segment is an open set in Rn. So, we will just mention take this convention moving from x to y, moving from x to y. When I write x y, I mean I move from x to y. When lambda is 0, I am at x. When lambda is 1, I am at y. I am changing lambda from 0 to 1. That is it. From lesser to bigger, higher. Because x and y does not have any relationship in general. They are points in Rn. There is nothing like x bigger than y, something like that. Hmm. So, now what is the meaning of mean value theorem in higher dimension? Mean value theorem in higher dimension means that you have a function from Rn to Rn, a differentiable function. Let x be any point in Rn. Then for any h that you give me, I can find a point C in the open line segment from h to x plus h. Okay, this this extra thing is not shouldn't be there such that f of x plus h minus f x is equal to grad f c in a product h. You see if you look at the one dimensional thing it is the same thing, but only done in the higher dimensional stuff where multiplication becomes inner product. So, I can consider an open interval i subset of r in such a way that 0 1 is contained in that i and let x and h are vectors given in Rn and I define a function from i to R. So, i con in this form f of a. So, for any t for this fixed x and h because see when x and h is changed the structure of phi t will change. So, for the moment I have fixed my x and fixed my h. Now, I define this phi t from i to R. So, i contains 0 1. So, this phi t is now so, i is an open interval. So, phi t is continuous because f is continuous and phi t is differentiable on i because f is differentiable. Now, apply the MVT that you learn, we know about the mean value theorem for the one variable at t equal to 1 and t equal to 0 because just look at the 0 1 interval. So, there would be a t 0 which is 
in the interval 0 1 open interval 0 1 such that phi 1 minus phi 0 is equal to phi dash t 0 into 1 minus 0 which is 1. Now if you compute phi dash t what you will get apply the chain rule as given in theorem here it is written 0 0.3 or the chain rule theorem if you want. So phi dash t is computed in this fashion grad of f of x plus th. So this is a chain rule. So first what you do you take the gradient of so what you do you take the gradient of f at this whole x plus th and then you differentiate with respect to t. But here because you are in the vector setting your multiplication becomes inner product. Then when I, your matrix multiplication is also left as inner product you just have the first row. So it becomes grad. So basically you can do it in a mind more intuition. Okay, I take the gradient of f of x plus th. Now, now I take the derivative with respect to t. So if I take the derivative with respect to t, uh, t dt, when it is, if I take the derivative of t here, it's 1 and I will just have an h left, but h is a vector. So how can I, what can I do? I simply just do take the inner product because I multiply. That's it. That is an intuitive way of doing it. So phi dash t is this. Now, when f if I put phi dash t0 here, it will be grad of f of x plus t0 h. So f now when I put t equal to phi, phi t and I put t equal to 1, it is f of x plus h. When I put t equal to 0, it is f of, it is f of x. So what I will get from this inequality here, I will get from this inequality is f of x plus h minus of f of x is grad of f of x plus t0 h. Now what look at f of x plus t0 h. So what is it? t0 x plus h plus 1 minus t0 x plus h. So I can always express it. So t0 is lying between 0 and 1. So x plus t0 h is now expressed as t0 x plus h plus 1 minus t0 x. So it is lying in the open line segment joining x and x plus h. So here it is uh, x not h, here it is x. So if I put c as uh, x plus t0 h, then c lies in the open interval x open line segment x to x plus h. So here in the main setting it will be not h, it will be x to x plus h. Please to note this correction, it is x not h. So there has been in this last two docs quite a few bit of printing errors because I have been typing very fast. So um, please uh, I apologize for them but for the students of this course you will get a corrected version of the notes when, I, when I, you get the slides you will get the corrected things thank you very much we'll get it the notes the slides would be up on your uh, thing by today night but these uh, lectures would be uploaded you can always contact me if you have any questions and your mid semester work is just up to this mvt in higher dimension thank you very much